well hello there and how are you going this morning um, my name of course is Gerda Muller I am one of the clinical psychologists at the psych professionals I'm also the founder of the practice yes we've been around for more than 10 years already and I wanted to do this special live stream for all our psych professional uh, family members this morning. Hey Abby, thanks for joining me. Hey Kim, how are you going? How's things in Melbourne? I hear yesterday was one heck of a warm day. It is beautiful here up in Brisbane. Hey Patricia, how are you going? Uh, Kim says to hi Gerda. Yes, I am outside here on my deck. I put the kids in the house because my husband is at work at the moment. Yes, on a Sunday, he's been called in to work. So I've put the kids in the air conditioner. Hopefully they won't come and interrupt my live stream. <laughs> yes, so um, I'm of course speaking to our psych professional community and family members, whether you are a colleague, whether you're a peer, whether you're a client, past, present or future, whether you are a referrer, um, welcome, thanks for joining me. Hey Chris, how's Tasmania today? Hopefully you guys are having a beautiful summer as well. So I'm going to not do a very long live stream, so it's going to be very succinct because as Murphy's Law will have it, I'm sure my kids are going to come running through the door any moment. So the title of today's message is Don't Let Anxiety Spoil Your Social Life. And I had this experience yesterday and I thought I just absolutely need to share this with our psych professionals family. Chris says it's gorgeous in Tassie, fabulous. Uh, uh, not Tess, Chris, that's good to know. I'm so used to speaking to Tess from Tasmania, uh, but I'm so glad to have you on here, Chris. Um, yes, yeah, so yesterday um, I had this experience and I thought this is so relevant, I think, to a large uh, percentage of the clients that we see at the practice, but I'm sure also even uh, you know non-clients because I myself am a psychologist and I still had this experience. Chris says, Tess is the best, she sure is. Um, so what happened? So I woke up yesterday morning, okay, and we were actually having friends and family come over to visit um, yesterday afternoon. So my husband arranged it and um, he arranged for them all to be arriving at 3 p.m. Um, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, to have fun, the kids can be in the swimming pool, have an open fire, do a barbie, all, all that type of stuff. And when I woke up, I went to the gym with my daughter, uh, which is our routine as we do, and then my mind started taking over with regards to all the things on my to-do list of what it is that I had to do before these people arrived. Because there was quite a number of people that were coming over. And um, obviously, uh, you know, I love to have people over, but I found myself getting very anxious, first of all, because of all the stuff on my to-do list that I had to do. Obviously, I knew my husband could still um, help me with all of that stuff, but the number one thing, hey Trudy, thanks for joining. Um, hope you're well there in Melbourne. So the number one thing my worry was that, um, okay, I need to do all of these things. I know it's going to be done, you know, I, need, I had to go buy some crazy presents for people that we haven't seen over Christmas. Um, I had to, you know, go, go to South African store because there were South Africans coming over for some special things, you know, that, that we like to have, um, to go grocery shoppings and all that type of stuff that I needed to do. But then my main concern was the house. Now, if you've got three kids, two of whom are, are little boys and monkeys, uh, you would know it's really hard to keep your house nice and tidy. And I was telling my husband, oh my goodness, look at the floors, there's stuff everywhere. You know, it's like, I'm not gonna have time to clean this up. And my husband had this one response for me. And he said, Gerda, people live in this house. And then he gave me the look, the look. That look that says, Gerda, <laughs> you're a psychologist, you should know better. <laughs> Tend to get worried about being judged by your friends and family. And it's not that my conscious mind was worried about being judged, it was me. Um, I have that belief that, you know, 
I need to respect people when they come over, so I need to create a nice environment for them to come in and relax and feel comfortable in. And then, therefore, I have these high standards of what does that look like? You know, like at the very least, I need to wash the floors, which I didn't end up doing. <laughs> okay, at the very least, I need to roll up that puzzle we've been working on since Christmas, that was a gift, and pack that away and, you know, tidy all the pillows and all of that stuff. Um, we rolled up the puzzle, but we didn't do anything else. And, and I thought, you know, th this is a really great reminder um, for a lot of us because uh, as a clinical psychologist, I work with, um, you know, anxiety disorders. A lot of the other psychologists at our practice work with, well, I think 100% of us actually do work with anxiety disorders. And it presents in various shapes, sizes, forms, presentations. It has effects from very mild effects, like I had yesterday, to really very severe effects where for some people in that situation, they will completely cancel the social gathering. Or what they might do is they, they, they would become so irritated if anything came in their way and annoyed to getting the stuff done off their list or getting the cleaning done that we become you know, snappy with our kids. Hey Jackie, thanks for joining. Hope you're well over there in Sydney. You know, we become snappy with our partner or our husband and there might be a blow up and it's not pleasant at all. And that's why the title of this live stream is Don't Let Anxiety Spoil Your Social Life because it will spoil your experience in that, you know, if you cancel it completely, you're not going to have that social gathering with your friends and family. Or you might feel really guilty afterwards because you lost it with your little one because you've just cleaned up here put the child over there and then they move here and they make a mess there, which happens. And then you hard on yourself and most often it's our own rules in our heads about, you know, cleanliness and, and, and all of that stuff that comes into it. And the bottom line is that it's your house and you live in your house and if people are coming over to your place and they go, oh, this is yuck, you know, then they're not their friends, your friends. Now, I'm not talking about not cleaning your house ever or letting your kids just go completely feral and not doing anything about it. Obviously, as a parent, you still need to parent, you know, but I'm talking about that everyday mess and stuff that just goes everywhere, not to give yourself a hard time with it because it's not realistic wanting your house to look like a show house. You know, and at some level, I wanted to respond to my husband when he says, said, well, people live here, like, well, surely for one day in the here, it's going to look like a show house, but it's unrealistic. <laughs> it is so unrealistic. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. First of all, to let you know that, that, you know, us as psychologists, we are very real. We are very human. Just because we've got so much skills and experience doesn't mean that we don't have these moments in our lives as well that we need a bit of help with. And you know, uh, my hubby is a tradie, he's an electrician, but sometimes he's, he's a really great psychologist for me because all he needs to do is say, Gerda, people live in this house and give me the look, you should feel better. And, and I think we all need somebody like that in our lives, you know, somebody that really gets it. I guess um, I've done a lot of uh, preaching and lecturing to him over the years so he's picked up a lot of my skills and stuff that that I would use on him potentially because well, that's the thing it's very easy being in this seat and in this chair giving advice to other people it's much easier being the observer and going oh I noticed this is happening and this is the solution it's much harder when you're in that moment Kim says a good reality check thanks so much Kim um, and, and I guess that's the difficulty that happens, uh, you know, for a lot of people. It's so hard to just calm down sometimes and become that observer in your own life. And which is why it's so great to have somebody, whether it's your husband, your partner, your best friend, that can do that for you. And, you know, if you don't have someone like that, another alternative, of course, is to consider seeing a psychologist, like the fabulous clinicians that help practice. I think it's so great having that opportunity to go in, whether it's on a weekly basis, a fortnightly or a monthly basis, and having that space for an hour 
where you can tell someone this is the stuff that's happening, this is how I'm feeling, and that person is a really objective observer, can give you the best possible um, you know, reflection of what it is that they're seeing, and together you can problem solve how to you know, fix what's happening, how to improve what's happening, and we find a lot of times our clients leave just feeling better because they've had that space to stand back and you know, just dump all that stuff that's been happening and, and have that help to problem solve what's going on for them. Kim says, true friends don't judge your health. Exactly, Kim. I so agree. Kim says, yes, I love being an objective observer. Yes, it is. It, it is so great. Um, not in this house where I'm living now. So um, our previous home when we lived in, in Shaler Park. We lived there for almost 10 years. Uh, I had the most beautiful neighbors. It was husband and wife, they have three kids, um, all very similar to my kids, um, where the eldest is a daughter and then two boys. And I absolutely loved going over to her place because it was always messy. And I felt comfortable going over there. They felt comfortable going to us because it was just, this is normal. You know, with three kids, this is normal. Hey, Michelle, thanks for joining us. Um, and it is unrealistic to want it at that set level. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you're not going to have a life beyond doing that. And that, unfortunately, is what anxiety can do. And the more you get into your anxiety, the more it just runs riot in your life, unfortunately. And it's really about becoming more self-aware in terms of what's going on and then getting some skills. Because I can tell you, if you just gain one, two, top three skills in terms of really having skills, understanding why you need it, when to use it and how to use it, it can make such an amazing difference in your life. And it's, and it's why I love working with anxiety disorders because I know when somebody comes in with anxiety, doesn't matter how mild, moderate, severe, or extremely severe, that three skills that we can teach them can make a humongous difference. So don't let anxiety spoil your social life. Don't let anxiety rule your life. Um, and I'm not saying that we need to be completely anxiety free. Let me just say that. That is impossible. I'm a clinical psychologist who I had mild anxiety yesterday, okay? So it's impossible. It's a normal human emotion, like being happy, uh, being tired, being irritable, annoyed, frustrated, angry, being content, feeling accomplished. It's a normal human emotion, but it's about knowing how to make sure that it doesn't take over your life. Because the fact of the matter is, if you respond wrong or in an unhelpful and unresourceful way to anxiety, it gets reinforced. And guess what happens? It comes around more often, and it comes around, when it comes around more often, it comes around at an elevated level. So just learning the skills in terms of how to manage it can make such a big difference in your life. So if you do need help with it, please reach out to us. Now have a look at our website, it's psychprofessionals.com.au, or give us a call. You can email us as well. All the details is there on the website. Our psychologists are there to help and to support you. Doesn't matter how big or how little the problem is. Jackie says so true. Glad you enjoy it. you agree, Jackie. Fabulous. Patricia says, one of my clients said once, I can file anxiety in my cupboard with happiness, sadness, anger, and normalizing emotions. That is such an awesome statement. It, it, it is so great. And it's about knowing that it fits in that filing cabinet. So when you, if you imagine a filing cabinet, that drawer might say emotions. And in that drawer, the anxiety goes with happiness, sadness, and anger. And you can file it in there instead of this being a file that's always open on your desk, open on your lounge, on your kitchen uh, counters, in your bedroom, completely taking over your life. And it's really about going, I can file it away, and it goes with all that other normal stuff that happens to us anyway. That is so fabulous. Love that. Alrighty, well,
Well, thank you so much for everybody that joined me live. If you are watching the recording and this resonates with you, please put down a comment, place like, uh, place love, press love even if you love it really. And uh, if you know that there's maybe somebody in your, uh, on your Facebook friends list or anybody in social media that could benefit from this, please consider sharing this on your timeline. We are very passionate as the side professionals about reducing the stigma around mental health. And by sharing that, you are taking a little action that can make a huge difference in supporting us in reducing that stigma. Thank you, thank you so much. And remember, here at the side professionals, we help you live the life you deserve. So let us know if we can help you with anything. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye for now.